Welcome back to the next video, everybody. Today, we are going to talk about the special cases of theorem two from the previous video needed in the proof of Fermat's last theorem. And we'll look at the special case for Ribbitt's theorem today very briefly. Another thing I want to say is I'm starting to go through my channel and label my videos within the Fermat's last theorem playlist in three different ways. Uh, they're all labeled with a global number starting at one for which video they are in the series. Now they're all labeled by, well, they're going to be labeled soon by chapter and then also by lecture within the chapter. So look out for that to happen over the next couple of days. I've just been referencing like, oh, chapter five, chapter two, chapter one of my notes. And if those things aren't labeled, it's hard to go back and actually figure out what I'm talking about. Okay, let's get this video out of the way. So what's the big theorem of the chapter? Let's let P be a prime at least two. And let's let rho from G sub Q to GL2 of F P bar be a continuous irreducible odd representation, which is modular of some type. Then rho satisfies Sayre's conjecture. So it's modular of the type prescribed by Sayre's conjecture. Moreover, if rho is FP bar modular of some type NK epsilon and N and P are co-prime, then N is a multiple of N of rho, the N from Sayre's conjecture. K is at least K of rho, the K from Sayre's conjecture. And epsilon is obtained by epsilon of rho, the epsilon from Sayre's conjecture, via the canonical map from Z mod NZ to Z mod N of rho Z. Okay. So we would like to see today how Ribbitt's theorem is a special case of this. Special cases of theorem two are needed three times in the proof of Fermat's last theorem. The first of those special cases is Ribbitt's theorem, which we have seen is used in the proof that semi-stable modularity implies Fermat's last theorem. This used to be the so-called epsilon conjecture. Let's briefly recall the situation from way back in chapter one of my notes. Suppose Fermat's last theorem is false. Then there is a prime P at least five and pairwise co-prime integers A, B, and C with A, B, and C, uh, A, B, C non-zero, such that A to the P plus B to the P plus C to the P is zero. So we have a non-trivial integer solution to the Fermat equation with exponent P, in other words. The Fry elliptic curve, which we'll call E sub F attached to P and to the triple A, B, C is a semi-stable elliptic curve. Let's let rho bar sub P from GQ to GL2 of FP bar be the residual Galois mod P Galois representation given by the action of the Galois group of Q on the P torsion of this Fry curve. Recall that the minimal conductor N sub E sub F of the Fry curve E sub F is just the product of all the primes dividing ABC. And that two, among the, two is among these because you can assume that one of AB or C is even. Okay, so by theorem two of chapter one, we know that rho bar sub P is odd, irreducible, unramified away from two P and flat at P. By theorem one of chapter one, rho bar sub p has cyclotomic determinant. So by definition, literally, epsilon of rho bar sub p is trivial. The character attached to this representation is trivial, according to the prescription of Sayre's conjecture. OK, um, so I, I claim that n of rho bar p, so the n from Sayre's conjecture attached to this representation is just 2. And that follows, uh, as I'll let you check very quickly, from theorem 2 of chapter 1. The equation for the minimal conductor of E sub F, which I just went over above, the semi-stability of E sub F, and the description slash definition of the Artin conductor, which we went over recently, but we also gave a little bit of an overview of that also in chapter one, or maybe that was chapter two. Okay, and then I didn't give you uh, a de the definition of the prescription of K, but I'll just tell you that K of rho bar P is two. And that follows from theorem one of chapter one as well, it turns out. And if you'd like more details on that, you can see the Sayers conjecture paper. Proposition for section 2.8. Okay, so if the modularity theorem holds, then E sub F is modular. And so by the fivefold theorem, rho bar sub P must be QP bar modular of type uh, the conductor. Remember, the conductor of the elliptic curve has to match the level of the modular form. That conductor is N sub E sub F. And then uh, weight to character trivial. Okay, so weight to also comes from the fivefold theorem and just from the modularity theorem in general. And then that the character is one comes from the fact that the modular form is in S to gamma zero N. But remember that's just S to N with the trivial character kind of equipped to the situation. Okay. So uh, if you recall the ability to reduce this level here, from n sub e sub f down to two would produce a contradiction because there are no weight two cusp forms at level two for gamma zero of two. Okay, 
Now E sub F is square free. E sub F is semi-stable. So N sub E sub F is square free by definition of conductor, right? And so it suffices to prove theorem two for type N to one in the case N is square free and P is at least five. Well, if you just go back to chapter one and look at the statement of Ribbit's theorem, this is just a special case of Ribbit's theorem. Okay, and so Ribbit's theorem does follow from theorem two as a special case. All right, so that is the first of the three special cases we'll look at. We'll look at the other two starting Friday. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody, and I'll see you then.